Hello and welcome to a brand new series I'm launching. I'm going to be calling this series Mediocre Game Showcase. This series will focus on games that are, you know, not quite terrible, but not really great either. These are sort of your average, middle-of-the-road, you know, run-of-the-mill games that just sort of get lost in the annals of time. The ones that are, you know, not have nothing, nothing really redeeming about them that really makes you drive to play them over and over or games that you really dri are driven to finish even. These are the ones that maybe were oh, way overpriced when they were first released or maybe um, with the passage of time have become rare or whatever and now are have such inflated values that they can't possibly live up to how much they're, how much they're going for. You know, but... Anyway, the uh, the first game I'm going to be talking about in this series is a launch title for the Game Boy Advance, and one that, personally, was way too expensive for actually what it was worth. And that game is Iridian 3D. Iridian 3D, as I said, was a launch title for the Game Boy Advance in when it launched in 2001. It was developed by a German developer, Shen-En, and published by Majesco. The game is an on-rails shooter similar to Star Fox, and boasts easily the most impressive graphics the GBA could do um, for a launch title, and among all the Game Boy Advance games released throughout the entire life of the system, Iridian 3D still stands out probably in the top 10 most impressive visually of, the, uh, of what the GBA could do. Unfortunately, the gameplay is repetitive and frankly somewhat boring. This game is kind of a one-trick pony that way, with having such amazing visuals, but actually forgetting what's important when you play a game. You know, the gameplay. A shooter can stand out um, amongst other shooters if it treats the player to constant new stimulation. If a shooter, you know, because all these games are, are fairly repetitive in, in their nature, because, you know, you shoot, new enemies come, you shoot them, repeat and repeat. However, Iridian sort of falls flat because it doesn't really stimulate the player with new things going on. They're just the same wa same enemies will come at you in slightly different waves or they'll be slightly different um, formations. But for the most part, you'll just be doing the same things for the entire length of the game. And it doesn't help that there is only a single fire button. That's right. This game could essentially be played with an Atari 2600 controller with just the directional padding and all the, the directions that you can go, and then fire. That's it. The, the Game Boy Advance has four buttons. There's the A and B and then the, the two shoulder buttons. But this game doesn't use them. It just uses the A button, which is and really disappointing. However... There is a good quality with this game, and it's one redeeming feature beyond its, its amazing visuals is the music. The music in this game is probably among my favorite video game tra soundtracks of all time. Um, there is a remix album of this game and its sequel that is just absolutely fantastic and is definitely worth downloading and uh, checking out. Um, but anyway, with all that said, let's play some of this. This is, again, Ridian 3D for the Game Boy Advance, and we're going to open this up. I have this in my uh, custom DS case here. So we're going to open it and pull it out. All right, so here we go, guys. Put it into the Game Boy Player. All right. Here we go. Try that again. There we go. Hopefully. one more time. Problem with the with the Game Boy Player. No dust slap. Without a dust flap, 
the game can get dirty, or the cartridge slot can get dirty. Now, even before I get into this, let me say that when this game came out in 2001, I paid $60 for this game. This game was the price of your average AAA game nowadays. Keep that in mind. Alright, let's start.
keep in mind that the Game Boy Advance, like the Super Nintendo, doesn't actually have any built-in 3D acceleration hardware. And unlike the Super Nintendo, it didn't also have any um, any co-processors like the Super FX chip or anything like that. This is all done through sprite trickery. that? A password function. In 2001, there's not even a battery backup save in this game. And it was $60. And it only uses a single button, and then the D-pad. I suppose you can also pause it with the start button. The select button doesn't do anything, the L button doesn't do anything, the R button doesn't do anything, and the B button doesn't do anything. <sighs> but I love the music, though. Awesome music in this stage.
an impressive explosion. Alright, the next stage, the third stage, uh, is in the clouds, and this stage, my favorite soundtrack, or my fa favorite track in, of all the soundtrack in the game, I love this song.
So again, this is Iridian 3D, a launch title for the Game Boy Advance that can nowadays be picked up for next to nothing. This game is, you know, not rare, uh, not particularly valuable nowadays, and it's not particularly good either. It's just not particularly bad. It's just really middle, middle, ra middle round of the, or, I mean, uh, middle of the road, you know, it's, it's such a typical game that doesn't really have any sort of defining features about it. There are much better shooters on the Game Boy Advance. In fact, its sequel, Iridian 2, is a far better option. Um, this kind of game, you know, even even with um, a password system, or even, even with like a, like a proper save system and, you know, smart bombs or whatever, the Star Fox perspective on the Game Boy Advance just doesn't really work. Um, the, the game, it, it's sort of really difficult to judge where bullets are and judge 3D space because the system is not 3D. With all that said, let's show you one more stage and that will be at the end of the video.
Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.